Welcome to the People Planet Profit podcast. I'm Hayley Jarrick, CEO of the Supply Chain Sustainability School. And today I'm going to be talking to you about something that might make you feel uncomfortable or it might be a trigger for you. So if you need to, please seek help from a mental health first aid officer, your workplace employee assistance program, a medical professional or contact Lifelines 24-7 Australian Crisis Support by phone on 13 11 14 or text on 0477 13 11 14. Homelessness is not a fun topic to talk about. Most adults have a hard time processing Australia's confounding homelessness problem. We don't know how to talk about it with other adults. We feel uncomfortable explaining it to our kids. And we often struggle to find the right action, so end up doing nothing. So in this podcast, I'm going to share tips for talking about homelessness, easy actions we can all do, uh, and two personal stories. On the 23rd of June 2022, leaders in business, community and government will be sleeping without shelter in one of, on one of the longest, coldest nights of the year to help change the lives of Australians experiencing homelessness. The Vinnie CEO Sleep Out raises money to provide people experiencing homelessness and people at risk of homelessness with vital access to food, accommodation, education, counselling, employment and health services to help people overcome poverty in the long term. And for the first time, I am going to be one of those CEOs. And so I wouldn't say no to anyone donating using the links in the description. But the Vinnie CEO Sleep Out does more than raise money. It raises awareness. So here are some tips from Vinnie's about talking about homelessness. Keep your explanations straightforward. Homelessness is when someone doesn't have a home and or they have no place to sleep, eat or permanently keep their belongings. Not everyone has friends or family who can help them, so they have to find different places to sleep each night. Not everyone has enough money to own or rent a home. They might not be able to work right now, or maybe their job doesn't pay them enough uh, for them to afford a home. The second one is about model compassion and empathy. Show kindness, kindness to homeless people by smiling and saying hello. When you buy a copy of The Big Issue, stop and chat with the vendor. If you can afford it, give supermarket gift cards, warm socks, hot coffee or a meal. I understand that sometimes this can be confronting. Indirectly, you can give presents to shelters at Christmas and raise money in lieu of birthday presents. And one of the easiest, inexpensive ways to help is to call out uncompassionate and derogatory language towards homeless people in everyday conversations and especially in earshot of homeless people in public. There are two personal stories I want to share with you, not because I think I'm a perfect example of compassion and empathy, but because these two stories help keep me honest. I used to commute home from the Sydney CBD by train to Cogra and then by bus home. For those that have made that commute will understand that the length of the journey is a game of skill and chance. I thought it was so clever. I knew the fastest way to get from my desk to my psychologist's office and to the train station. I knew the exact point on the platform I needed to be at so that when I exited at Cogra, I was right next to the exit stairs. I always smiled when I was at the front of the pack of the stairs and not stuck in the masses at the back. This meant I could walk and not run past the shops and down the stairs to the bus stop. And if you did everything right, you would arrive at the bus stop to see the bus pull up. This was important because it didn't wait long and on the days when one of these things didn't go to plan, you showed up just in time to see it drive away, leaving you waiting another 30 minutes until the next bus. In summer, this wasn't so bad, but in winter, it was dark and cold. The bus stop is in front of an Indian and Nepalese restaurant, so often in those cold nights, we'd grab a sneaky freshly made naan bread to tide me over until dinner. One day, I thought I had done this run just right. I got to the bus stop, the bus pulled up and everybody started piling on. But one thing was different. There was a lady there in a wheelchair who was unable to get on this bus because although scheduled to have a, uh, a wheelchair access bus arrival um, at this particular time, the bus that showed up did not have wheelchair access. And the driver very bluntly told her, sorry love, you'll just have to wait another half an hour. The lady that this affected broke down in tears. Um, She sat on the edge of the curb as everybody else around her piled onto the bus. It was winter, it was dark, it was cold. 
So I decided to not board that particular bus and wait with her at the bus stop until the next one. This wasn't because I, I felt an obligation to sit with her. I didn't want her to be alone. I could see that she was visibly upset and I wanted to check in with her to see if she was okay. The bus drove away and the two of us sat there um, and I was able to get to know her and learn more about why um, it was so troubling for her to miss a bus on this particular day and also the other struggles that led up to the point of her just being so emotionally overwhelmed that missing the bus was such a trigger for her. And what I learned was something that will stick with me forever and it really sort of showed just how lucky I was and the privileges that I faced in my life. Because this particular lady did struggle with her mental health issues, but she was told that if she wanted to get treatment, she needed to check herself into hospital. And if she checked into hospital, then her public housing unit would be given to somebody else because she wasn't going to be living there and because the public housing for people in wheelchair access was so limited, um, they decided that if she was going to be using going into hospital for a length of stay, that her unit would need to be given to somebody else in a wheelchair who was on the waiting list to access that home. So she was faced with a decision of seek help for an illness that she needed treatment for or and be homeless or stay inside uh a home that she has access to that you can actually get in and out of with a wheelchair that's fit for purpose, but then be forced to deal with your own uh, illnesses on your own without medical help. And as someone who has had the privilege of having a great psychologist to work with, I, um, on this particular day, felt really, um, really out of place and really uncomfortable about talking to her because despite all the many challenges of treating a mental illness or going and seeing someone um, about building your, men your mental agility up, um, I had access to something that I could do. I actually thought, you know, as much as it annoyed me to miss the bus, um, the fact that I had access to a facility that I could go and get help with and then still be able to make my commute home to a loving family in a warm house um, that my husband and my kids were going to be safe and secure in really made me feel privileged in this sense. And so I, I really felt for, for this um, lovely woman. And as, um, as I'd spoken to her for half an hour, uh, the next bus did arrive. Uh, luckily, it did have wheelchair access, as promised this time. And I was able to help uh, help her onto the bus and travel home with her um, and sort of really sort of be there for her on this particular day. Needless to say, while we were waiting at that bus stop, I did go in and buy a couple of sneaky, freshly made hot naan breads um, and shared one with her, um, which was a nice way to spend the time um, and definitely a way to sort of tide us over until we got home to have dinner that night. After this, after this night, I had probably not given it much more thought. Um, as most people who have been who do the daily commute on public transport, you might run into a few people and then never see them again. Um, and I never expected to see um, this lady again ever in my entire life. And then a couple of months later, um, I was making the same commute home, and I arrived at the bus stop and saw her there. Um, and she was smiling and she'd had her hair done and she looked amazing. Um, and I went over and said hello and asked her how she was going. And she said that she had been deliberately trying to catch this same uh, bus home from when she goes to the shops down at um, Ancog Road to hopefully um, catch me and once again meet me because after the visit um, that we had together, um, she did go and seek help. Um, she tried to get some stability in her housing and reach out to her family. And because she was able to get treatment and um, tap into the support around her, she didn't feel so overwhelmed and was lucky enough to get treatment and still have a house to, to live in. Um, um, and she wanted to say thank you to me for just sitting there and talking with her. Um, and of course, that was something that I never expected. Um, and like I said, I never expected to see this lady again in my life, let alone have her um, deliberately try and catch me at the same bus stop at the same date and time um, just to sort of catch up with me. Um, and since that point, we did meet frequently after that. And as I saw her around the neighborhood, I would always stop and have a chat with her as well. Um, and what it left me from the experience um, is just sort of a real check on my own privilege. Um, and every time 
I complained or I uh, was upset at, you know, if you didn't quite get on the stairs just before the time or if you got at the bus stop just in time for it to drive away. Um, it didn't make me realise how incredibly lucky I am that um, I wasn't restricted um, in my life around some around those things that really sort of hindered her um, from being able to get on, on any bus um, as it came through or access any sort of medical help or be able to move into any unit um, that uh, that would help her move around and not just one that is fit for people with wheelchairs. So it, it left me incredibly humble. The second story I would like to share is one that happened far more recently. Um, and I was lucky enough uh, to be in London for work um, and at lunchtime it was sunny and so I thought why not I'm going to take a picnic with me and go and sit in Hyde Park while I'm here um, and enjoy the sun in London which I never thought I would see. <laughs> and so I, I had you know stopped by um, M&S food and I picked up a basket of goodies that I could sit down with in the sun, um, do some work in the afternoon and just have a picnic in Hyde Park and what an incredible experience and privilege that is to be able to do. So I'm walking, I got, uh, got off um, my tube stop and walked out and I was walking through Hyde Park and then lo and behold it was London came true to form with the weather <laughs> and in the matter of seconds it went from a very sunny to very overcast windy and bucketing down with rain day in the middle of the park with no shelter um, so I ran over to the nearest park bench <laughs> and proceeded to unpack my backpack onto this park bench to try and find my raincoat which of course I put at the bottom of the bag because as you're you're prepping for London the very first thing you do is put a raincoat in your bag because that's what you think you're going to need but then because it'd been so sunny it had somehow worked its way to the bottom everything else was sitting on top so I'm at this park bench and I'm pulling apart everything from my bag trying to find my raincoat and it is pouring down around me um and then all of a sudden I sort of became aware that nothing nothing was getting wet. Like I wasn't getting wet. The stuff I'd pulled out of my bag wasn't getting wet. And I looked up and realised that a man who lived in the park had um, opened up his inflatable airbed and was covering me and all my belongings with it from this torrential downpour as I was trying to find my raincoat. And... I was, it, it, it sort of, it took me back that um, one, I hadn't noticed him there as I was walking through, um, but two, that he had seen me walk through and seen that I was in, you know, a spot of bother trying to find my raincoat and saw that he had, I had emptied all of everything out onto this bench as I was trying to find my raincoat. Um, and without a word, without even a whisper, um, he took something that was probably one of, you know, his whole life and all of his light worldly possessions were located in one bag and because he wanted to help me he took out one of those possessions and shielded me from the elements um which is a complete act of generosity that i was so moved by at the time um and like i said he said nothing he didn't have a whisper he didn't expect anything in return and while i packed all my you know put my raincoat on and i packed my belongings back into my bag and I turned around and looked at him and said, I'm so grateful, so thank you so very much for doing that. Um, and without sort of, he couldn't, was nonverbal and wasn't um, communicating back with me, but did smile. And um, then the only thing I could think to be able to thank him um, for that incredible act was to, I gave him my picnic hamper with all of my good, good, <laughs> yummy goodies and hot tea and everything else in it ready to go Um for my visit and that was my way of trying to repay him from an act of generosity and kindness and I think that as most people walk through the world um, and you might see people who don't have a home to live in who literally have all their belongings in one bag um, may feel a little bit intimidated in interacting or talking with um, with people in this space um, but this particular story um, really just drummed home to me that they are human and you have no idea the situations they have been in that left them in that situation um, but they still show care and they still show compassion um, and so if if someone who has nothing can show that level of compassion and empathy towards somebody else then surely somebody in a position of privilege like me can return that same generosity and kindness to complete strangers in the future.
So that's it for the People Planet Profit podcast today. Um, I hope that you found it entertaining and I will catch you next time.